Hi there, everyone. I'm meteorologist Ashley Baylor with a check of your latest forecast. Did want to pay close attention to Hurricane Irma, now a major Category 3 hurricane with wind sustained at 115 miles per hour, and it continues on mostly a westerly track at about 12 miles per hour. I just want to zoom in a little bit closer and show you one feature here. When we were on earlier today, you can see we had that well-defined eye, which is indicative of rapid intensification and usually also indicates that this could become a major hurricane, and sure enough, it did as of the 5 o'clock update from the National Hurricane Center. But now you can see the eye isn't as well defined. You can see there are some clouds filling in. And sometimes when we get these major hurricanes, category three or higher, we can actually see an outer eye wall develop. And so basically the outer eye wall is trying to replace the inner eye wall. So it's basically eye wall replacement. And so it can cause the storm to temporarily weaken, but then gradually re-intensifies. This is actually something we saw with Hurricane Harvey just before it made landfall. So not terrible surprising and clearly it still is a way to go. But over the coming days, it is going to remain a major hurricane. You can see it's expected to remain a major hurricane all the way into early next week. This is specifically the National Hurricane Center's forecast here, where it does have it intensifying to a category four storm by the time you get to early next week with winds picking up to about 140 miles per hour. But I wouldn't be terribly surprised if it became a category four hurricane before the weekend was over. The track remains relatively the same here, taking it towards the Lesser Antilles and then possibly curving it a little bit farther north from there. Here's a look at our spaghetti models, and I would love if this one outlier actually came true because it takes it up into the Atlantic and away from any land. That would be ideal. But you can see that most of our spaghetti models remain pretty consistent through about day five. Then once we get to day six, seven, eight, nine, ten, they kind of branch out a little bit, but overall most of them do Pull this just north of the Lesser Antilles and possibly somewhere in between Bermuda and the East Coast. That would clearly not be a necessarily ideal situation. And I do want to show you the difference between our American model, otherwise known as the GFS, and the European model. That's the one down here in white. I took this all the way out to day 10 here just to show you the huge discrepancy in the position of Irma. And you can see the GFS, again, otherwise known as the American model, has it extremely intense, anywhere between a Category 4 to Category 5 storm right in between Bermuda and Norfolk. And if this were to continue on a northerly track, it would actually clip parts of southern New England. They certainly don't want that, and we really don't want a major hurricane that close to our vicinity either. Whereas the European, you can see it takes it over the Bahamas, right in between the Florida Keys and Cuba, and then back into the Gulf. And you know exactly why we don't want that happening either. So unfortunately, even though these are huge differences and in these models, neither one is really ideal. Now we have a ways to go here. We have about 10 days out before this even comes close to our vicinity. So yes, things can change between now and then. But I will say the more consistency we see with those models, the more confidence it tends to build in the forecast. And the one thing they've been very consistent on is intensity. This is expected to remain a major hurricane over the next several days. Here's a look at Tropical Storm Harvey, where we still have some moisture associated with that one. It's actually been sparking tornado warnings near Memphis and into parts of Alabama for a good chunk of the day. Here's a look at our future track forecast. And as we go through the evening and overnight hours, we are going to see a few scattered showers develop as a cold front drops into the region. And with that front kind of hanging around the vicinity and coupling with some of the moisture associated with Harvey, we are likely going to see some scattered showers on and off throughout your Friday. Even though our future track forecast looks relatively dry here, if that doesn't necessarily be the case. I'm not saying it's going to be a washout. I'm not saying it's going to be steady rain from start to finish, but the umbrellas will kind of be up and down. And we'll actually keep scattered showers in the forecast for Friday night on into Saturday morning. And even through a good chunk of your Saturday now, it looks like it is going to be a little bit damp. So not a great start to the holiday weekend, but fantastic finish. Partly cloudy at 84 on Sunday, 84 on Monday. And as the kids go back to school on Tuesday, mostly sunny in 86.